It's your girl, Karina, here, and happy Blessed Wednesday! So today is a wonderful, wonderful day, all for the glory and grace of God, and I'm probably here like, wait, why is it dark? Wait, what happened to last Thursday? Wait, what happened to yesterday? My friends, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't need to worry. Don't need to sweat. i am not forgot about, forgotten about the podcast ministry because this is a ministry that I'll never forget. It's something that I get to be free to allow the Holy Spirit to move within me and speak through me to you, to my wonderful, wonderful true words of Christ. And so I hope and pray that you are keeping well and doing well and flourishing all for the glory and grace of God and always trying your best despite of, you know, how tired you can be at times and trusting yourself to provide for you in all the moments that you need to glorify his name is that. Is that that is what counts that is what counts and take it from there because you never know how our Lord will really make you move mountains despite of how tired you can be despite of how busy you are no as long as your willingness and your docility and your humility is on point for our Lord he will give you everything you need he will give you everything that he knows you can handle. And that is what we're simply called to do. But then it's our pride that gets in the way, thinking that we can handle it. Psh, I don't need any help. What are you talking about? Yeah, that is a huge obstacle that prevents us from growing forward, to, that prevents us from growing deeper with our glory, right? So that is why I'm so grateful and I'm so thank you for all of you wonderful viewers, all for the glory and grace of God. I give it all straight to our lady, to all to Jesus and all to God, no matter what. And so if there's any topics you want me to talk about, please feel free, please, please feel free to let me know down below and I'll be greatly appreciative of it on every single level. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I was saying before all my podcasts, let's get started. So my true words, Christ, I want to ask you all the question, how to place your care more in God? What is the first thing that comes to your mind, my friends, when it comes to placing more care into God, in God, for God. To me, docility. Docility, docility, docility. Do you know why? The willingness to learn, the willingness to be more submissive, the willingness to see more of God's providence and plan in your life, right? If we're so rigid and so prideful within our own ways, then how can we place more of our care and our trust in God? How? Ask yourself the question, how can you actually do that when you have the big boulder obstacle of pride in the way? How? The answer is, it's impossible. Because as it said in the scripture, as Jesus said, it is easier for what? A camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I'm not saying like physically a camel fitting through the eye of a needle. No, you gotta think outside the box. You gotta think beyond the words. What is Jesus really trying to tell you when it comes to that scriptures? It's easier for camels to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What? It's our attachments, our attachments to the world and our pride, our wealth, our status, our popularity. I'm telling you, we're in this world, but we don't have to be of this world. That is not what Jesus calls us to be and to do, to be of the world. Jesus calls us to be in the world, yes, but not immersed in the world not allow ourselves to fall into those what? Those distractions, those wealth, status, pleasures, right? So that is why we have to keep on placing all of our care, our trust in God to provide for us, despite of what we're starting out with, right? Despite of you starting out a ministry with like ground zero, know and be confident and be bold that God will give you the resources, God will give you what you need to bear fruit, to flourish, to grow, to multiply, to bring the scattered souls back. 
despite of what troubles, what resources you have at the moment, God knows what you need. You don't need to complain. You don't need to run to our Lord doubting him. No, you don't need to. Just be confident. Rejoice with what you have. Be grateful for what you have. And so that in that process, you will be able to allow yourself to permit what? God's will over your life. And permitting your life to be aligned with what God plans for you. All you have to do is give God the permission to work in your life without that obstacle of pride getting in the way. Because obviously that obstacle of pride is such a huge factor in holding us back and growing deeper in our holiness, through growing more in our spiritual life, from bringing more souls back, right? And that's the biggest, 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 biggest way the enemy tries to get that control over us right so we have to constantly remind ourselves that god knows what is best for us despite how much we have to be waiting no matter how much we're seeing things and we're just cringing because we want it in our own way we have to stop thinking according to our human judgment you got to stop thinking through a human judgment and judging things according to how God would see it. Because ultimately our human reason, our human reasoning is one of the ways that prevents us from following with God. And you know why? Because we fall into temptation, weaknesses, and those pleasures that causes us what? to make those rash, irrational decisions, those rush, hasty decisions without completely discerning and praying upon it first before acting upon it. There are times when you know for sure that is the will of God. You'll just feel it in your heart and then you'll see God really flourish through you. But there are times where you gotta take time to really make sure and pray upon it. And sometimes we are clouded by our distractions. We have that cloud of vision of making the decisions that will make us regret it in due time. However, 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 we should not allow regret to cause us to feel that sense of discouragement and doubt, making us feel that it's too late, give up now. It's too late, you're done, game over. No, that's what the enemy wants you to think. But what God wants you to think is to know that you can overcome all those fears, all those insecurities, all those worries that you have, let it go. Stop falling into a pathway that will just cover up your problems. There's no point in doing that. It's only going to cause you to have even more problems and more lies to cover up in the long term. That's why while you still have a chance now, stop. And realize and think and pray, is, it, is this what God wants of me? Am I following the will of God by proceeding in this pathway? Or am I actually just band-aid, like covering up things that I should be facing face to face? Those baggage, those problems that should be on the surface for you to take care of. Because most of the time, we as human beings, we tend to just what? Run away from our problems, cover our problems with other things that tend to give us that illusion of thinking that it is of God's will and whatnot. And then we're causing us to just live a lie. And then God's really trying to lead you back. But then again, your stubbornness is, the, is that source of pride that is preventing you from actually really seeing what God wants you to see, right? So therefore, run to her Blessed Mother Mary for the clarity, for the clarity to see your life through Christ's eyes, to see your life through God's eyes. And then you'll really realize where you've been all this time. But God doesn't force himself upon you. God lets you be. God lets you make your rational decisions. But along that way, he tries to send help 
for you to come back in the right direction. So therefore he tries to speak to you through your friends, your family, people closest to you, your subconscious mind, there. God is always there. God is always there trying to speak to us. That's why there's that what? That gut intuition. And when you feel something's not right, but you still proceed with it anyway, you'll feel the sense of guilt. That I feel like I'm doing something off. Yeah. Like guilt, like get gut, gut intuition. It's there. God speaks to us there in our heart and in our mind. But are we willing to listen? Are we willing to hear the voice of God in our hearts? To follow the will of God despite of what sacrifices are in the way? Every sacrifice you make for God will be rewarded a hundredfold. But when you do every sacrifice with the love of God, that's what counts. Making sacrifices out of frustration, out of displeasure, it's not going to help you. It's not going to make you become fruitful. It's just going to make you deteriorate within your heart and make you fall astray even more, right? Because remember, we all go through our spiritual dryness periods where God lets you be. God lets you go through your times of difficult times for you to grow on your reliance on God. How will you be able to learn if, it, if God doesn't step away for a little while? How? If God's always there, then you're just going to be like, okay, just give it to me already. Okay. <laughs> like, no. No, 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 no. When God steps away from you in your life for a little while, God's trying to help you grow deeper in your relationship with him. Not playing hard to get. I'm probably sure you're thinking, well, why? That's mean. That's not a fatherly figure. Well, when it comes to learning how to ride a bike, you have those training wheels. And then eventually when you take those training wheels off, you'll be able to ride a bike. God trains you. And for you to grow better and purify even more, he allows you to go through different, different difficult times. He permits those, not because he hates you, not because he's punishing you, not because of he doesn't love you. No, he loves you so much. He's watching you grow as you struggle, as you make sacrifices, as you become better. Right? So that's why we cannot be swayed with our human affections and feelings. That is how the enemy works within us, to rattle us up, to make us feel worried, to make us feel fearful, to make us doubt God. It's our human affections and feelings. We cannot allow ourselves to become swayed by that, to fall into the world. Because why? We become easily deceived and we make mistakes that way when we allow ourselves to become swayed because of our human affections and feelings, right? So that is why we gotta stand firm, stand firm in our faith so that we can walk side by side with Jesus. If we don't make those sacrifices, if we don't go through those trials and tribulations and those crosses, how will we be able to enter the kingdom of God? Allow yourself to realize that it is not easy to enter the kingdom of God comes with work but the good thing is you have everything you need you have absolutely everything you need you know what that is you got god's love and mercy right there all you have to do is allow him to enter your heart let him work there let him work for you to do wonders for his kingdom Yes, it calls for sacrifice. Yes, it calls for praying upon it. Yes, it calls for making time for him. Yes, it calls for you to spend more time with Christ. But it doesn't go unwasted. It doesn't go unseen. God can see you praying behind closed doors. God can hear and see every prayer you offer to our Lord. 
behind closed doors. He knows what you're praying for. God knows if he's already showing you the answers to your prayer of last year and it's only coming to life now. All you have to do is actually open your eyes and see it. And then let Christ move you in the right direction. Yes, I know suffering's not easy, but through suffering, we have to rejoice. We must rejoice. For through suffering comes with graces. Always remember that. Every time you go through a trial and tribulation and suffering, comes with great rewards. The times you go through those difficult times, rewards will come, graces will come in God's time. God judges you the way and how, how you actually work through those difficult times. But we have our Blessed Mother Mary to help us endure that those crosses, those times of trial and tribulations, what's there to fear? Our world may be crumbling, but the steady cross of Christ will always remain steady. A spinning world will always be spinning, left, right, and center. But the cross of Christ will always still remain standing. Despite of how much you may see the enemy working upon you, the power and name of Jesus Christ will always prevail if you call upon the name of Jesus. When you're going through a little moment of hardship, just call upon the Lord. Lord, stay with me. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Stay with me. Help me to do what you want me to do. And trust me. You will see everything you will need within you to do what it takes. All you have to simply do is practice the virtue of humility to place all your cares into God's hands more and begin there. Because there, my friends, you will grow deeper in your faith when you see the beautiful miracles God will work within your heart. Trust in him. Let him show you and take it from there. So there you have it, my friends. Stay strong, stay bold, stay confident in everything that God calls you to flourish. Don't be worried. Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. All you have to do is let God work his way and his plan in his time. So there you have it. May God bless you all. And I'll see you all soon in my next podcast and next video in God's time, of course, on Thursdays. So with that said, as I love saying all my podcasts and all my videos, don't be afraid to be true words of Christ. Bye. <laughs>